you live the life according to what people, what the society says is right or wrong. That's, that's your idol, not the word of God. And you and I were like that before God calls. We live the life according to what other people did. When everybody is doing it, okay, we join them. As long as everybody is doing it. And it says, according to the prince of the power of the air. Who is that? If not Satan himself. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He is the one that controls the powers, the principalities, the wickedness in high places. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. It describes the various powers that it controls. The principality of the power of the spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what it controls. So Satan is in control of the, all those powers. And so if you are living your life according to the society's standards, you are living your life according to what Satan has dictated to this world. So you are not living your life according to Jesus Christ. According, you are living your life according to what Satan has decided because the one that controls all the principalities and those principalities and powers, they are the ones that determine what society does. This is why you will find out this as a proliferation of morality, wickedness, rebellion in the society because those spirits have come down to dictate to this world, those who receive them, how this world will be lived. All these terrible passions, all these statues, all these heroes you see, they are often the pit of hell. Those demons have been released to corrupt man. See? So when it says according to the prince of the power of the earth, the of Satan, what Satan has decided to, to be done on this earth. Let's go to Colossians. Colossians 3 verse 6. Uh, Colossians, um, Colossians 1 21 and 3 verse 6. And then it finally says, the, the power that now works in the children of disobedience. So when you see people who are living a rebellious, disobedient life, disobedient according to God's standard, not according to the world's standard, then you know that there is a power in them making them do those things. When you see people committing fornication, adultery, stealing, cheating, embezzlement, ritual murders, um, joining alcohol groups, smoking, um, alcoholism, drug addiction, all these terrible things is because there is a spirit of Satan in them. People have said it's normal to be homosexual, but it's not normal according to the Bible. So Colossians 1, 21 and 3, 6. And you, and you who once were alienated, who once were alienated and, enemies in your mind, and enemies in your mind by wicked works. By wicked works. Yet now, Yet now, he has reconciled. He has, he has brought you back. Because before you came to know God, you were alien, you were foreigner to him, foreigner to all his promises. You couldn't partake in any place of God. But he's reconciled you how? By forgiving your sins and washing you with the blood. And he has brought you back to him now. So he's a debt you cannot repay. You owe Jesus salvation. He paid the price for you to be. In today. Okay, Colossians 3 6. 3 6. Colossians 3 6. It says, um, For which things say, the wrath of God comes from the children of disobedience. So, when it says that that spirit that works in children of disobedience, is the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of Satan. You can call it any kind of name you want. Because nowadays, right is wrong, wrong is right. There is no demarcation between what is right and what is wrong anymore. You know, when somebody commits a crime, you see there's something like challenged, or they, they call it a different name. So they don't really tell you the truth about that, that act. So among whom also, we also had a conversation in times past in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So if you listen to me today, you are not born again, you are still living your life according to the societal standards, 
then you are a child of wrath. God's anger or wrath is against you every day. So in times past, you and I, we were, we had that behavior in the society. We did like everybody else did. Lost of our flesh. What does that mean? That means you do what your flesh wants to do. You want to eat, you want to smoke, you want to fornicate, you want to watch pornography, you do it readily. You and I were like that before. God saved us. So fulfilling the desires of the flesh. That means, oh, rather than pray, you don't want to pray, you don't want to fast, you don't want to do anything holy or God. All you want to do is sleep, 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 wake up, eat this, eat that, um, watch pornography, uh, steal. You know, you don't count sin as anything bad. You know, before you knew God, it was just well by the cost. You would lie without thinking about the consequences. You just protect yourself. You know, all those things you used to do without any conscience of guiltiness. But when God saved you and I and He gave us His Holy Spirit, then and only then we have a consciousness of sin. And then we began to be convicted of the Holy Spirit and we thought twice about committing sins. So it's describing the kind of life we live, we lived before we came to know Christ. The life that everybody else lived in. Galatians 5 16. 1 Peter 4 3. Everybody's doing the same thing, nobody says anything wrong in this. Can't talk about homosexuality or lesbianism. Um, people commit fornication. It's okay. You know, this is the kind of life most people live unless God has called you to him. That's why you, you will know it's wrong to do those things and you won't do them. First Peter 4 3 and Galatians 5 16. Yes. I say then, then walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lost of the flesh. If you are walking in the spirit, it means you are walking under God's standard. And you can only walk in the spirit when the spirit of God is in you. If you are not born again and you don't have the Holy Spirit, you can walk in the spirit. No matter how much you try, you find yourself falling time and time again when you try to live a holy life. You cannot live a holy life anyway without the Holy Spirit. And um, how do you get the Holy Spirit? When you surrender your life to Christ and it gives you the gift of salvation and the Spirit comes inside you. Okay? First Peter 4 3. So in the past we were like that, we fulfilled the loss of our flesh, everything we wanted to do, we did this, we cheated, we lied, we did evil things, and we didn't say anything wrong with it. See, because we were children of wrath. Which is not disobedient, the spirit of Satan was inside us. Okay, first Peter 4 3. For we have spent enough of our past. We have spent enough of our past. Lifetime. Lifetime. Knowing the will of the Gentiles. Knowing the will of the Gentiles. Where we were born in lewdness. Lewdness. Lost. Lost. Drunkenness. Drunkenness. Reveling. Reveling. Drinking parties. Drinking parties. Abominable idolatry. Abominable idolatry. All those things we used to do, and we didn't say anything wrong with it until God completed us and saved us. Because they can talk to somebody else who is up on a game now, and they will tell you, well, what's the big deal? Some people will ask you, why do you need to be born again? They don't see any reason to think they're okay. Well, I almost remember that Jesus Christ told you, but then was like, until and unless you're born again, you're going to see the kingdom of heaven. You need to be born again because. If you're not born again, you'll be living your life according to this world's standards. You'll be committing sin regularly, even though you could be a shepherd, a pastor, an evangelist. This is why you see many people, many prophets or whatever, men of God or women of God who are committing sins. Even though they've been given the gift of prophecy, gift of evangelism, gift of singing or whatever, but they have not been born again by the Spirit of God. So the big difference between you being given the gifts, like the apostles before, they were born again when Jesus breathed onto them and they and they, they born in the book of John. They were given the gifts of miraculous powers to heal, to cast out demons, to lay hands on the sick and to be healed. But they were not born again. That's why they wanted to command fire to destroy the whole town because they didn't receive them. And Jesus told them that you don't know God's spirit in you. You see, you can be given the gifts to heal, to raise the dead, 
does not mean you're born again. And those people who have those gifts without being born again, they're the ones who are having all these terrible things in their lives, fornication, adultery, all these terrible things. If they are one, how come they have this gift of prophecy or whatever, but yet their lives are nothing to be rich to come about? See, I always know that. So by nature, the children of wrath, that means if you are not living a godly life, the God's standards, God's wrath or God's anger is against you every hour of the day. So, for God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. See? The great love where he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace, we are saved. So, God it was so merciful that you and I. Even though we were dead in sins, committing sins against sin, but because of his mercy for you and I, he quickened us, he made us alive with his son Jesus Christ. He raised us up, he raised us from the dead, the resurrection power. You know, that same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that raised you and I from the dead when we were dead in sin and trespasses. And he made us to sit together in heavenly places. Christ Jesus. So you and I have a seat in heaven. Although we have not applied this, but it's waiting for us. Remember Jesus Christ said, in my father's house there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. Are you going to let somebody occupy your seat? Or are you going to lose your mansion because of the sins you are committing here today? See? Jesus Christ, God, even though we are dead in sins, Still saved us because of his mercy. So really, if you're saved, you need to really thank God because many are not saved. And millions and millions are not saved. And that means if you are to die today, they will all be going to hell. So you that you're saved, you must not take your salvation jokingly. The very expensive gifts, it's not free, cost Jesus Christ our Lord his blood. And that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his glory of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. So everything God did is through his son. That's why Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. God has commissioned everything to his son's hand. He's going to judge you and I. He's going to judge everybody on this earth, including all of our religions. So if you like keep on cursing Jesus and blaspheming him, one day you will stand before him and give an account for all those terrible things you said about him. God has commissioned everything to him. That everything, if you want to go to God, you have to go to my son Jesus. There is no other way. People say, oh, there are many ways to God. Your way is different from my ways. Nonsense. There's nothing like that. There's only one way to God. And that's through Jesus. If you refuse Jesus, then you are deceiving yourself. You can't get to God. There is no other God but God in heaven. He has no other name. So, say for by grace are you saved through faith. And that of yourselves it is the gift of God. In other words, you have been born again, you have been saved by Jesus Christ and in his church. Is entirely because of the grace of God in your life. What does grace mean? Grace means unmerited favor. In other words, there's nothing you did that made God call you and save you. You might be thinking that, oh, maybe because my father is a shepherd, my uncle is a overseer, my auntie is a pastor, all these things. No, no, no. Or you could say that oh, maybe because I used to be fast a lot when I was in school, or I used to help people. I have to give money to charity. No, no, no. All those things will not have been enough to get you the gift of salvation. Let's for example take the holiest man on this earth. The man who you say is the holiest man. Well, compared to God's holiness, his holiness like filled the rack before God. That's what the Bible says over there. Your righteousness is like filled the racks. So you can never be good enough. Mary's salvation. 
Because even in sin you are born anyway, that's what the Bible says. In sin my mother conceived me. You are conceived in sin. If you are conceived in sin, how? You are already condemned, even before you came out of this heart. You are, uh, your mother's womb. You are already guilty of sin. Because in sin you are conceived. So as you mean that you don't commit any sin until you die, which is impossible, you are already condemned and going to hell. That's why Jesus Christ said, unless man is born again. When you are originally born by your father and mother, you are going to hell fire. So you need to be born again to be able to head to heaven. If you think, oh, I'm already in church, I'm a choir, choir master, I'm an evangelist, I'm a prophet, I'm this and that. Why do, do, you, do I need to be born again? Well, you need to be born again because in sin you are conceived and until and unless you are born again, you are going to go to hell. Sorry to say, but that's the truth. Don't think you are being a prophet or an evangelist or a choir master, a side man or a woman or whatever you call yourself. He is going to prevent you from going to hell. The good example is Cornelius, the book of Acts, for the Roman citizen who did a lot of good works. But God saw that if this man died today, he's not going to see me. So he sent Peter to preach to him and his family, and his family got saved. He was already good. He was, in fact, that was the same as a very holy man, righteous man, obeying the commands of God. Many of you are like that. You think because of your good works, that that is it. You qualify for heaven. No, no, no. No, no. it's not because of your money. Not because of your good works, all those things are not going to help you. Hmm? Let's go to the book of uh, the book of Acts, chapter ten. Book of Acts, chapter ten. It says there was a certain man in Caesarea called Colonius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. So that means he was a captain in the Italian army, and he had a hundred men under him. Now this is here for says a devout man. And one that feared God with all his house, which gave God alms, charity to the people, and prayed to God always. Can you imagine how many Christians even qualify for this? One, a devout man. Two, he feared God with all his house. Three, he gave a lot of money, gifts to people, he was very charitable. Four, and he prayed to God always. Do you pray to God always? <laughs> you are a Christian, yes, but do you pray to God always? This man was only a Christian. Yes, the Bible says he prayed to God always. And so in the vision every day about the ninth hour, that's 3 p.m. of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked at him, he was afraid. This is Acts 10, verse 4, and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, that Your prayers and your arms given have come up with a memorial before God. That is a prayer point. Lord, let my prayers and my arms giving come up before you so that you can remember me. That's what a memorial means. In other words, I have prayed so much, they have given so much to charity that this cup was full. And the angel brought the cup because they God, this person's cup is full. I said, Oh, who is he? Cornelius, oh! Now, I'm going to send a message to him because he doesn't really know me. Even though he feared God, even though he prayed to God always, even though he gave so much money, even though he was a devout man, he did not know God, Jehovah. Most of you watching, you don't even qualify for three out of those four qualities at the same time. And yet you are boasting, I'm going to go to heaven. Oh yes, my mansion in heaven. What mansion? And when, and, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto you, okay. And now send men to Job and call for one Simon, whose so surname is Peter. And then he gave directions and he sent for Peter. And uh, you know, Peter eventually came. And as Peter was praying, they all got saved in his family. And they were all baptized. What am I telling you? You should be happy and rejoice in your salvation. Because without it, we will not be anywhere today. Since by grace, it's the grace of God that has saved you. Not on your works, 
one of your goodness. Maybe you are already boasting. I'm such a good person. Let's go to 7 Timothy 1 9, Romans 4 16. 7 Timothy 1 9, Romans 4 16. Romans 4 16. Book of Romans 4 16. 1 9. Romans 4 16 says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which of the law, but to that also which of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all. See? It is by faith. That means you must believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins for you to be saved. Go on. Tell to make one night. Who has saved us? Who has saved us? And called us with a holy calling. And called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works. Not according to our works. But according to his own purpose. For his own purpose and grace, and grace which was given to us, was given to us in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus before time began. Before time began. You see, we are saved by grace through our faith. If somebody is preaching to you about salvation, the gospel message, and you don't believe, there's no way you shall you can be saved. That's what that is. You are saved through faith. Faith is the instrument that opens the door of salvation for you. Is the key that opens that lock. Without that faith, if you don't believe in what they're telling you, that you died for your sins, that it's carried away your sins, that because of that you can now be holy and pure, you cannot be saved. But if you believe it, that truly that Jesus Christ shed his blood as payment for your sins, because the Bible says that the wages of sin is what? Death. You are not qualified. But death. We are already dead anyway. Sin had already killed us spiritually. Then he came and we believed in the sacrifice of the cross. And so with that faith, that sin washed away every one of my sins. And I came alive spiritually when I was dead in trespasses before. I came alive. I know what it means to be saved because the day I was saved, I felt a huge body lifted off me and I felt so light that huge body which I had been carrying and did not know was the weight of my sins so if you are truly born again you have the same experience where that big bag of sins tying you down is removed and you feel light like a newborn baby and you start to speak your walk that point on. So it is the gift of God. Salvation is a gift. You cannot work for it. You don't deserve it. You don't merit it. It's not because of your father or your mother or your great grandfather. Your great grandfather might be Apostle Paul or Peter. It does not mean you're going to be saved. No. God has no grandchildren. You have to work on yourself. So you fear and trouble. You have to believe in the cross, the finished work of the cross. See, none of what's just any man should boast. See? God knows that we like to boast. Oh, I was saved because I was such a good man. I used to pray. I used to fast. I used to do give, give, give to men. No, 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 no. You had nothing to do with it. All your actions have nothing to do with the salvation. Say, for where is workmanship? That means God made us. Like you made the pot, the clay, he made us where his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. So everything is in Christ Jesus. Nothing is outside Christ Jesus. Whatever you have today, you have it because of Jesus Christ. So God made you and I, he created us in him. You know, he said that uh, the old is gone, the new has come. You are a new creature. Christ Jesus. You are made again. You were born normally in sin, condemned to die in hell, and now you are born again and then you are recreated. A new creature never before been. You are created in Christ Jesus to do what? Unto good works. If indeed you are created to do good works, how come we find many Christians involved in these terrible atrocities? Adultery, fornication, stealing, cheating, 
idolatry. How come God did not shed his precious blood for you to be doing that? You are created to do good works. One of those good works is called Galatians 5. Galatians 5 19. And see what the good works are. That's what you are actually doing. Because you ask, what are these good works? You don't know yourself, but we just go by it. Galatians 5 19 to 22. Okay, it's here. Galatians. Okay. Galatians 5. Okay. And it says, but the fruit of the Spirit, now with the outward behavior of the Holy Spirit living in you. That's what it means, the fruit of the Spirit. You know, if you, if you catch a fruit from a tree, you know what kind of tree it is, right? So the same thing, if you see these things in your life, then you know the Holy Spirit is in you. It's not the Spirit of Satan. Like, it says, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance of self-control against such there is no law. And these are that Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Now, if you see these signs, you know the spirit of Satan is in you. Listen. The works of the flesh are manifest. Galatians 5.19 And there are this adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, Witchcrafts, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, always fights, seditions, different groups of party spirit, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revenants, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they we do such things shall not inherit the kingdom. So when you see behaviors, you know the kind of spirit of that person. You cannot have the spirit of God in you and be going to commit murder, doing ritual murders, donating your wife or your son or your cousin. Is it Satan living in you, not the spirit of God? So God created us anew when you were born again. He made us new again, a brand new creature. And that creature was supposed to be doing good works. Imagine you're making a car. A car is supposed to be from A to B, right? Suppose that car and said that, no, I don't want to take people anymore. I want to start, you know, um, killing people. Anybody that enters me, I'm going to die. That's not, the, the person that made the car says, this is not why I made you. I made you take you from point A to point B. In comfort. But now I do the opposite thing. That's what many people are doing today. They're not doing what God made, created them to do. Which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. You see? When you are born again, you are ordained to be created to walk in holiness, to do good works before God. Not bad works, not those things we just read about. If you are still doing those things, you are not truly being saved. The Spirit of God is not in you. We need to repent and turn in your life and go and answer your prayers. Let us pray. Jehovah Jesus Christ, may my help. Father, I can thank you for the words of life spoken to our hearts today. Let this words bring forth fruits in our lives. Let us know that salvation is a gift from you and not of our works. For those who are not saved right now, Father, I ask you to save their souls from the pit of hell. Give them the revelation of your Son, Jesus Christ, and of the sacrifice of aid on the cross by shedding his blood for them. Bring them into your own house. Write their names in the book of life. That they from this point on might walk in holiness and righteousness before you and to do the good works you are for them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 That's it. From now on, if you are not yet saved, kneel down wherever you are and ask Jesus to come into your life. Tell him that you have sinned against him and now we want him to wash you with his precious blood. And you will do that. If you truly need it, it will come to your life. You will feel it. But that point in your life will change. If you are truly saved, there will be a change in your behavior. You will no longer be doing those things.